Uh, Gab, where's he going to be at the start of next season? I don't know. It depends how much, uh, how badly, you know, teams that need a center forward uh, with his skill set are willing to go and, uh, and, and how much money they're willing to put down. I mean, right now, you know, Napoli are saying, you know, officially, well, he's off the table, unofficially. They're saying, well, let's look how much these other players are worth, right? So if Enzo Fernandez is worth, you know, I know he plays a different position, but if he's worth $120 million, and if Jack Grealish is worth $100 million and whatever else, this guy um, has done it. Only Erling Holland has scored more uh, uh, league goals than he has in uh, Europe's big five leagues. Um, I think they're going to go and they're going to they're ask for, for a ton of money. I mean, I, you've seen figures of of 150 million uh, out there, uh, some even 180 million. I don't know if it's going to get to that because I think there's there's a finite number of teams that can push the boat out that far, and then it's going to come down to, you know, is he going to get antsy and try to force a move, um, which is also a possibility because he has a long-term contract, though. Um, but I mean, I, certainly, if you're Napoli, you're just kind of enjoying it while he's there. For fear of upsetting all the Italian fans and saying we're anti-Italian, anti-Serie we don't know what we're talking about, how do you think he'll make that transition from Italy to the Premier League, Gab? Any concerns at all? I don't know where this comes from. I, and I, I think it's an ugly point because there is a perception, well, but, you know, in, in the, you know, does he have the technical ability to play in the no, Premier League? No, I don't League? think it's well, that. It's just you look at, um, look at Lukaku, obviously. Lukaku goes there, scores plus 30 goals, comes back and does nothing. And before he went there, didn't exactly light things up at Manchester United. I know it's only one example, but right. it's a question that people ask. OK. All right. Well, you know what? Come up with a better example than that. Because Romelu Lukaku didn't start his career in Italy. He moved to Chelsea when he was 18 years old. He played for Everton. He played for West Brom. He scored a ton of goals for those clubs. He went to Manchester United. If you look at his goals to for 90 minutes ratio, it's actually not terrible. Then he had a nightmare uh, scenario where uh, Solskjaer didn't play him and he stopped scoring goals. And then, obviously, he went off to boil later. But it's not like because uh, Lukaku didn't work out that Osimhen's going to necessarily be be the same thing. I think there are concerns over his technical ability, but um, I think those are, those are frankly a little bit overplayed. I think what matters is he's got tremendous athleticism, he's got strength, and he's a super, super intelligent guy with a huge work ethic. Um, and that is what, what stands out most about him. And, you know, technically, is he, is he the second coming of Marco Van Basten? No, he's not. But I think when you have those other pieces in place, uh, you're in a very, very strong position. And I, I think it's kind of ugly how people keep bringing up Lukaku because, well, because they have one or two things in common um, that, that maybe it's a bad place to go. I won't say Tammy Abraham or Koulibaly. Let's not go down no, that no, road. No, Frank, told, no. Frank told me to ask that question. I mean, Frank, no. get me into trouble. <laughs> um, OK, your Manchester United, Stevie, who do you choose? Kane or Osman? Mm. Oh, hey, you got to choose Osman. Uh, Can he cut it in the Premier League? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, for me, you've got, to, you, you got to choose Osman. I mean, he's 24 years old. Yep. You're going to have him for another te a decade. Harry Kane, he's going to cost you at least 100 million and you're going to have him from, for how long? At his very best, three years maybe max. Mm. So just from that point of view, I think you've got to take Osman. And I agree with you, yes, Osman, but don't underestimate the arrogance of the Premier League and people that would suggest, well, Harry Kane has done in the Premier League, Victor Osman has not, and so therefore we'll go for the sure thing, the guy that we know in Harry Kane, not the potential of Victor Osman. But if you're thinking about what a player can give you over the next 10 years, as Stevie just referred to, there is no doubt here. There is no question that it should be Osman. Frank? Well, I have to go with the guys, even if I was thinking about what Dali just, uh, just said, you know. We know that Kane can settle very well to any club in the Premier League because he already experienced that Premier League, where Osimhen didn't. But the talent of Osimhen, his future, what he can prove and how well, he's proving to be, uh, I saw him playing for Lille not being known at all and performing so well, then coming to Italy and playing that well, uh, there is no doubt that he can settle down and, uh, and, and do well for, for, for any club in the, in the Premier League. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, but um, 
is represent the future. And uh, if you if you invest uh, in some players, that would be the right investment. We go from Osserman to Rabio. Oh, Crikey. Uh, that's, a <laughs> that's a slight drop. Steve drop off. <laughs> uh, he's got a free transfer, Gab. That right at the end of the season? Uh, he's been linked to Liverpool, Steve. Gab, what do you think? <laughs> so, Rabio was, I think, one of my least favorite players for uh, a number of years, just because you look at. You look at his ability, the whole package and everything, and you think, wow, he should be really good. Instead, I think at Juve, mostly, he's been really poor until this season when all of a sudden, and I think it coincided with an uptick with the French national team as well, he's shown a ton of personality, shown a ton of responsibility. He's been, I think, one of Juve's standouts uh, this season. What you have to weigh up, anybody signing Rabio is... Is this kind of a one-season wonder uh, for him where, you know, all the bits come together or has he turned the corner? And also, because it's Rabio, maybe Frank can tell us more about it, um, what's up with his mom? Because obviously you're talking about somebody who's, who's been in England, was a whole history of going to clubs. He was in Manchester City, he was a Paris Saint-Germain, and then just falling out with him um, over silly things, often involving his family members. That is something that, you know, you need to be sure of that, that that's not going to come back to haunt you. If you were someone like Liverpool, would you look at Rabiot, Frank? Yes, yes, because of what he's done so far, you know, for, well, since the World Cup, you know, and, uh, and the talent coming out to the world. Uh, I, can, I can wonder, you know, if I need him or not. If I put myself in Rabiot's shoes, you know, I would say, well, you know, for a while, you know, I feel good, I play well, so I go with the floor and I stay at Juventus because I know and I know what I can get, and I know the, the, the club, and I know the, 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 the competition. And so because it works well, you know, I stay. I don't know if it would be a very good idea. I don't know if we'll change something to Liverpool the uh, middle of the park. I don't know if he has that character to play in the Premier League as well. Um, I have doubts about that, I have to say. Stephen, you used to play for Liverpool, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm... Um... <sighs> What Gab started with was exactly what I was going to say. Up until the World Cup, I, I thought this guy was just lucky that he played for so many supposedly good teams. But he was really good in the World Cup. I can't honestly say I've seen much of him uh, since the World Cup. But I guess the fact that he's a free transfer is attractive. But then after I think about that, I start thinking about the problems that... that whether it's him or his family or anybody else, you don't need that. You, you, you don't need it at a football club. Somebody who just from nowhere causes drama all over the place. So, at the end of the day, I would suggest no. Because I think all the problems and certainly most of his career, what he's done, doesn't warrant being at Liverpool. Doesn't warrant playing for a team that Hopefully next year we'll want to win the Premier League and do well in the Champions League. So right now, I would say no. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.